In this video, I'll show you how to illustrate daisies, and then we'll build your confidence with watercolor painting by adding color after the drawing is complete. Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Shada, and today I'm gonna to share my step-by-step -step process for illustrating daisies, and then we'll have some fun and finish them with watercolor. So uh, these supplies, I am working in this little um, watercolor sketch pad from Strathmore. You've seen me use it in other videos. It's a really nice size. It's about five by seven, maybe just slightly bigger. Um, and it has 140 pound watercolor paper. Then for my illustration, I have some fine liners, a pencil and a good eraser. Fine liners like a Pigma Micron, they are uh, waterproof. So you can actually illustrate something and then go over it with your watercolor paints and it's a really nice method um, to create a mixed media piece. I also have my watercolor paints from Muno. This is a 48 pan set, two glasses of clean water, paper towel for blotting my brush, and then I am using a number three pointed round brush. I'll just wet it really quick and you can see when it's wet, it has this nice big belly that holds lots of paint, but it comes to a delicate fine point, which is great for detail work. So let's start with our illustration. I'm going to begin by creating a guide. I draw a large circle and that shows me where the flowers will sit. Then I place some circles and ovals and those ovals show me where each flower will be. It shows the size and shape of that daisy. I think I'm gonna do five. It's easier to make um, odd numbers look good than it is even. So there's my initial guide. Now let's refine it. I'm going to focus on one flower at a time. This one I've placed the stamen fairly close to the center. And then the outer circle shows me where those petals need to uh, kind of end. So it, it makes it really easy to do an even daisy if you have a guide first. And you can see the petals in behind here are quite short and the ones up front are a little longer. The stamen is just sitting slightly high in that circle and uh, that gives a little dimension to my flower, a little bit of depth. For this second one, the center of the flower is right in the middle of that circle. So all of the petals are pretty much the same size, pretty much. And as I draw them, I'm kind of wiggling the pencil. I don't want them to look too perfect. I'm doing some short petals, some long ones, some of them have a jagged edge and so on. My third daisy is going to be slightly concave so indented towards the center. So I place the stamen low in that oval, so it's a, a little bit closer to the bottom of the oval. And then you can see the front petals are going to be quite short, whereas the petals at the back of the oval are a little longer. And that's giving me a concave look as opposed to the first daisy that we did where it's a little bit convex. And it all has to do with just starting with the oval as your guide, then you place your stamen, should it be low for a concave flower or higher up for a convex one. And then you can do some lines to guide your petals, but the petals will sort of draw themselves once you have these guides in place. For this final one, I've placed the stamen quite low and I'm doing some guidelines to help me draw those petals. And then I just go around, petals at the back are a bit longer, ones at the front are a little bit shorter. So I really set myself up for success with all these many guides. I'm not just trying to draw a daisy on a blank page. All you should really have to think about as you complete the flower is how to draw those petals. Make them a little weird, make them a little wonky. Let's go over it in pen so you'll really be able to see all these steps that I'm talking about. For this one, we've got a stamen that is sitting um, close to center, but the back petals are a little shorter, giving us a slightly convex look. And and uh, I am now wiggling that pen as I go around each petal and just trying to make sure that no two petals look very similar. Some are a little squared off on the ends, some are pointed, some are a little jagged, and I'm adding just a hint of line shading. So maybe one or two lines to show the shape and sort of flow and texture of that particular petal. But fairly straightforward at this point. This is the fun part when you get to start showing the shapes of these petals and adding that depth and texture. 
For my second daisy here, I'm adding to that concave look by curving the tops of those uh, front petals. So they sort of curve up in front of the stamen and that is just sort of helping my cause. It's helping with the look of depth and perspective and it's really giving me that concave look where the center of the flower is a little bit sunken. So it's simply curved the tops of the front petals. I'll do it on this one here too. I just give a little bit of a curve at the top of the front petals, the petals that are along the bottom of the flower. And then of course the petals in behind are longer, so that helps too. And you can add just a few little lines on these petals to show sort of which way they're flowing and, and show a little bit of that depth. But of course we don't wanna to do too much line shading because we are going to add watercolor to this piece. As you go around and complete the contour drawing, think about, you know, again, just wiggling that pen. You don't want the petals to look too smooth or cartoon-like. Some should be quite square. You might make some petals really short, others might look a little out of place, and it's also a good idea to um, definitely overlap lots of them and then also leave some gaps on the flower so that it looks natural and organic. And friends, if you would like to paint or color along with me, I have released my Daisy illustration as a coloring page. You could transfer it to watercolor paper and paint it in or just color it. That is available as part of my weekly bonus content that I give on Patreon. It's a great way to support the channel and get lots of extras. So head over to my Patreon site to check it out after today's video. Okay, flowers are looking good. Now I realized I hadn't drawn in all the stems and I definitely wanna do that in pencil before I do it in pen. That way I can draw right through a flower if I need to and I don't have these stems that are like a little bit offset, you know, of when one sort of starts somewhere below one flower and then pops out on a completely different angle. Uh, so stems drawn in kind of wonky and wavy and very perfectly imperfect. And then I also added some lines, some curving lines here, and that just shows me where I want to add leaves. I want the painting process for the leaves to be really free and organic, and I can always come back with my fine liner later. Let's get rid of all of our pencil marks, clean this up, and then the final step in the illustration process is just to simply add maybe a little bit more line shading, a little bit of dotting on some of the stamens, totally optional, but at this point, I'd say we're ready to paint. Let's have a quick chat about mixing colors. Since we're painting white flowers, I am going to mix up a bit of a light gray and beige so that we can kind of add shading to these white flowers. And I do that by, you know, bringing some white paint over to the palette. So just using a wet brush to scrub at the cake of paint, get it on the palette. And then from there, I add just a tiny bit of brown and it's giving me this really nice creamy beige. And you can sort of play around and mix up different um, shades of that beigey color. I'm gonna do the same thing here with white and gray and just get a little bit of white on the palette and then mix a tiny bit of French gray into it to give me this really very sort of light, light gray. These delicate colors that we've mixed up are gonna serve us really well when it comes to shading the white daisy. Okay, let's move on and mix up a little bit of green. Two of my favorite greens in the Muno set are the olive green and olive brown. Um, they're both really natural and uh, I love to use them for uh, painting plants especially. And then I also love to mix olive green with a little bit of deep thallow green and that's what you see me doing on the right. Finally, I'm picking up just a little bit of yellow ochre. I'm also going to grab some brown so I can kind of play around with shades of yellow. And that'll just be for the center of each flower. And that's actually where I'm going to start. So taking that yellow ochre on the tip of my pointed round brush and we're just going to start adding some color to the stamens. Now, this is a great way to practice watercolor if you're new to the medium. It's almost like you've created your own watercolor Color coloring page and you just get to color it in and have a bit of fun. You can think about mixing paints, you can think about brushwork, but you're not thinking about like how to perfectly paint a flower. With my stamens sort of colored in, you can see I left some little highlights on them. Um, some negative space showing through is always a good idea. I'm gonna pick up that green on the tip of my brush and we're going to just, again, just carefully, but not too carefully, add some color to those stems. 
It's not until we get to the leaves that we actually get to do some loose watercolor painting because all we did for these leaves was draw the kind of the center curving line. Now we can play around with the watercolors. It takes lots of paint in that pointed round brush. You can paint the center of the leaf and then just kind of have a bit of fun and make these messy shapes going off in both directions from that center line. You can add a little bit of extra water, have some light areas or pick up a more saturated paint and have a really dark area. But I'm just having fun and kind of running the brush across the page, seeing what shape emerges. Uh, so play around. The leaves are your chance to play. And again, if you're getting to know watercolors, that's a great way to approach it. You're not going to mess up the leaves. They're not going to look bad. They should look a little weird and organic and natural. So you've got these very structured daisies already all drawn in and illustrated beautifully. And now you get to play and have fun and practice your watercolors with those leafy leaves. <laughs> Of course, the leaves also serve as a nice color border for the flowers and they really help the white daisies jump off that white page. Just gonna finish up adding green to any little spots that I missed and that's it. Now we are at the point where all we have to do is add a bit of gray or beige, whatever color you prefer, to our daisies to kind of shade them a little and then um, we're getting close to being done. So adding the watercolor is really fun and it doesn't take long at all. And all you see me doing here is adding a little bit of gray. I sort of focus on areas where there would be a little shadow, so maybe near the center near the stamen if the flower is concave especially and it's sunken well maybe the light wouldn't hit there as much any of the petals that are kind of sitting beneath other petals I'll put a little bit of gray there where the light wouldn't hit and I just you know kind of run the brush along some of the other petals just to add that contrast and add that gray um, and then I did sort of darken the gray slightly and went back in and added a bit more near the center I also added more brown to that yellow ochre and just did a bit of dotting on the stamen just to make them really pop. And I thought that looked really nice. That really brought those flowers to life. And then my final thing was just going with a really dark gray near the center of each flower. And that just really helps those flowers to look like they are three dimensional. Let's set that brush down, let that dry completely, check that it's dry completely. And then we can add, uh, we can continue continue to add to our illustration. So because I wanted to paint the leaves before illustrating them, kind of did that in the reverse of the rest of the drawing or the piece, I will now go around and illustrate these messy leaves. I don't want to overdo it. I still want them to retain their kind of loose look. So I am just sort of making the illustration a little bit offset from the paint. It's a little bit smaller. It doesn't quite match up. And I really like that look. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed illustrating daisies with me. If you are new to watercolor, this really is such a great way to build your confidence with those paints. And I decided to finish my little sketchbook piece with a title. This is the April birth flower after all, and I think that just finishes it off in a really nice way. Head to Patreon for the coloring page, and I will see you soon with a new tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe.